Hey everyone, good day to all of you. I hope you're all doing well. This week, I wanted to do another ammunition test, this time on a pretty interesting and uh, rather infamous round, the MA55A1. So you can see, of course, this has an exposed penetrator tip. This is the replacement round for the old venerable M855 green tip, of course, you can see here. So the MA55A1 here, it's supposed to have better both penetration as well as better terminal performance, even at lower velocities compared to the regular green tip MA55. So what that means, of course, lower velocity, that means it should do better out of shorter barrels and it should also do better at longer ranges when the bullet slows down. For a few interesting notes about the MA55A1, first off, because of this exposed penetrator tip, as uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about if you've read into the or looked into other videos about the MA55A1 before is that this causes problems with the feed ramps on a lot of ARs so you do need to make sure or I should say it's recommended especially if you use a lot of MA55A1 to use the uh, enhanced magazines so there is an enhanced metal magazine that has a different angle that it presents the bullets at or you can also use the Gen 3 P mags which also present it at a bit higher of an angle which you can sort of see right there I'm not really going to be able to test the wear of this for long-term use. I only picked up uh, 30 rounds of this just for the test from Warpig Armory. So these are legit rounds, just FYI, before I do start anything off. You can see these do have the actual military crimp, which uh, I do also find pretty interesting because I own a lot of Lake City MA55, and I never saw them do this intense of a crimp. They do a different crimp than normal uh, civilian loadings, but this is a very very intense crimp. You can see four points right, right there where they actually pushed the metal into the, or I should say over the primer itself, similar to what you see on, say, uh, the gas case staking on an AR-15. For the precision test, how I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to be firing 10 rounds of MA55A1 at 100 yards, and then I'm going to be following this up with 10 rounds of Lake City MA55, just for a good comparison. The rifle I'm going to be using is a kind of custom build. It is a 416 upper receiver with a 16.5 inch MR556 A1 barrel and bolt carrier. Uh, bolt itself is also a 416 part, but you know, essentially it is a MR556 A1. Historically, this rifle has shot usually around 0.8 to 1.2 MOA, and that's 10 round groups again, with good ammo. The scope I'm using is a Schmidt and Bender short dot, which I'll have at the maximum magnification of 8 power. And I'm shooting off of a bipod from prone. The reason for that is a bench can potentially induce accuracy issues with the hard wall versus the soft shoulder under recoil, just with the barrel harmonics. On that note, it is, of course, free-floated, so there won't be any potential vertical stringing as a result of inconsistent bipod loading. It'll be all very consistent in that regard. I'm using a Smith Vortex flash hider, which I've torqued barely above hand tight, just enough so it doesn't come off under recoil. So this also guarantees that there's not going to be any constriction of the bore, so no accuracy issues from that. And they did fire 10 rounds of fouling shots before doing this test, so we shouldn't see any flyers from a cold bore. As I'm firing, I also have a camera downrange, which I'm going to be using to record every shot as it impacts. Simultaneously, just off camera, I have a lab radar, which is recording all the velocities. Lastly, I also have a Mantis X attached to the rifle, which is going to be recording my trigger scores. That way, we have three ways to tell if there was any flyers, and I have a lot of data to confirm if there are any flyers. All right, so I can see the target down range. Doesn't look too bad. All right, we'll talk about how the precision did overall, and then we'll finally get to that terminal performance. Let's go over those results. Do note, there is some other stuff written down here for another thing I did that I'm going to get to later, but let's just focus on the 10-round comparison between the MA55A1 and the MA55. So, both were pretty similar. The MA55A1 did shoot about 0.4 MOA better, though, which is quite nice. I did look at the most extreme 
rounds that are, that are out there. So if you look at the first round, of course, on the MA55A1, that shot pretty high. Unfortunately, the lab radar did not record that one, so it might have been a really high velocity. I had to adjust the exact positioning of the lab radar. So unfortunately, we don't know for sure what was wrong with the velocity there. The Mantis X score was fine. As I mentioned earlier, this was not a cold bore, so that shouldn't have contributed to that flying so high. Aside from that first shot, there weren't really any rounds I was concerned about on the MA55A1, and I still included round one in the total, and it was still two MOA. That's great, I would say, for mil-spec ammo. Moving to the MA55, these were quite a bit more horizontally strong. In particular, round three, that is the rightmost round, as you can see there on the extreme edge. I included it. I don't think it's a, a flyer. I just think it's something with kind of inherent to the inconsistency of the ammo itself. The muzzle velocity was right in there along with everything else. Now, of course, this is just a 10 round group versus a 10 round group. So if I were to do more groups, then potentially we would start to see these might end up being statistically identical. I would say that is a very big possibility, especially when it's only approximately a 0.4 MOA difference. That's not huge, but that's the result. I don't have a huge amount of this ammo, as I've said, so just going off of this, it does seem that the MA55A1 is a little bit more accurate, which it is supposed to be. Moving now, going back to this MA55A1 table here. If, you, if I scroll down here, you can see I have five and five highlighted in green and blue. I'll go ahead and zoom this out so you can see it better. So all of these in green are the velocities at shot out of a 14.5 inch barrel and then the blue of course shot out a 10.3 inch barrel now you can't see it here because i don't have it written down in this table but in the past i did some velocity testing out of my 10.3 with regular ma55 exact same lake city and was getting 2596 feet per second now on average i'm getting about 40 feet per second more out of the 10.3 so not a whole lot now one thing interesting though is the muzzle velocity out of the 10.3 inch barrel here it is faster than what i saw out of ma55 so maybe the powder they're using is less sensitive to the barrel length in other words it might have a faster burn rate so it gets more of that powder burnt before it reaches the end of the muzzle but even if that's the case it doesn't seem to be much different now for the terminal performance test this is going to be done with actually two different rifles not the one from before but instead i'm going to be using a 14.5 inch hk416 a5 and then a 10.3 inch maxim defense mdx 510 the reason i chose these two barrel lengths is because they're going to be more frequently used in conjunction with the ma55a1 round most likely neither of these are suppressed what you're seeing on there is just a, a linear comp just so it's a little bit less blasty by me especially with that 10.3 but this way there's no potential free bore boost on the velocity, which would potentially actually have a little bit of an effect on the terminal performance. The test medium is 20% NATO clear ballistics, ballistic gel, and both rounds will be fired into the same block. However, I'm going to be slightly offsetting my aim, so one of the rounds I'm going to be putting just slightly towards the top and the other slightly towards the bottom, and it won't be so much that it'll potentially go out of the block, but it'll be just enough that way neither of the rounds interfere with the other. So those were kind of unexpected. I had heard so much about the MA55A1s being really loaded very hot compared to the old MA55, but those velocities we were getting were a little bit hotter, but not really that different from old MA55. I did recover 10 rounds, not all of them that I fired, but you know, enough of them to have a good, fairly good sample size right here. And you can see, so first off, none of the primers backed out or anything at all, which would be really difficult since these are crimped in so well but uh, I just bring that up because usually you see issues with the primers wanting to back out when you have really high vol velocities or high pressures and they all look fine they're not flattening or mushrooming uh, at all so that all looks good there I did some research on this and apparently if you look at the head stamps here so all of the ones I have are mostly 2014 I do have a few 2013 head stamps that I uh, uh, didn't 
recover, but I did fire. The originals, apparently, from what I've read, have a 2012 marked Lake City head stamp. Uh, like I said, these are all 2013 and 2014, and yeah, the pressures seem to be totally fine here. And here is the ballistic gel. So actually, on both the 10.3 and the 14.5, we saw a very good immediate dump of energy. You saw how well it fragmented. However, uh, regarding the 10.3, if you look right there, the penetrator is just right about there. So that's a little bit odd. Uh, of course, you want the fragmentation, all the immediate terminal just effect and all the energy to do what it did and blast out pretty much immediately. But I would want to see the penetrator actually go further because again, this is supposed to be an enhanced penetration round. I would expect this to go into the second block, which we did see happen on the 14.5. The penetrator ended up approximately 22 inches total. So it's about here on the second block. Of course, neither of these rounds, you would not want to use these for something like home defense or self-defense, but as far as the military is concerned for being more barrier blind to an extent, this does seem to work pretty well, but again, uh, it does seem a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the penetration on the 10.3, just stopping so soon. So what I would say is a good result as far as clear ballistics gel is you want all the energy to be contained in the first block. Again, the penetrator part itself, I don't see too much of an issue if that keeps going on for a little bit longer. And while we saw most of the energy dumped pretty much immediately on both the 10.3 and the 14.5 over here, uh, both of them actually had some over penetration where uh, you can actually see a little bit of the shrapnel fragmentation did end up in the second block. So and there was a little cut in the side of the gel right here, you can see, which did not affect it. This gel was used before to test one other bullet, but uh, it was just a handgun bullet. So again, not, it didn't really interfere with these two. Now my father actually tested MA55 in gel out of an 18 inch barrel. And uh, even then the maximum transient cavitation that he captured on camera and you know, the penetration and everything based on the results of this video, it does seem like the MA55A1 does in fact have a better terminal effect, of course. Like we saw, even at the shorter barrel lengths, lower velocities, still had really good energy dumping. The only thing I didn't really test in this video was the MA55A1's performance as an actual penetrator round through a bunch of different hard barriers, but I don't have enough to really do that. Uh, and we can extrapolate pretty much all the results just based on the performance through the raw gel right here. Definitely an improvement over MA55. So thank you all for watching this video on the MA55A1. Pretty cool cartridge. For my own conclusion, I would say from this testing in this video that I did today, it does seem like it is an improvement over the MA55 original green tip. And it does seem like they've really overcome the initial infamy that was surrounding this. Like I said, from all the testing here, it had pretty comparable velocities, ever so slightly hotter than a regular MA55, but not by much. Didn't see any issues with any of the rounds, no failures to feed, it was all good. As far as for a private citizen, would I recommend you go out and pick up a bunch of these rounds? I would say absolutely not, maybe in a decade or something, long into the future when these are potentially cheaper, if that even happens. But as of right now, these are very expensive. I just picked up 30, just purely for the test because I don't wanna stock up on these when they're uh, or a dollar a round currently. So comparing that to MA55, which is a little bit under 50 cents a round usually right now, uh, I would just say the increase in performance is just not really there as far as the cost is concerned. Any other questions or your own experiences or other things you've read about MA55A1, if you wanna add those in the comments, by all means, I will make sure to always read those. And any questions, I'll do my best to always get back to you as well. Other than that, take care. Hope to see you all in the next one. See you then.